Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Welcome for being here. And let's talk about testing. Uh, we are, I'm using now the TMS Web Academy, Web Academy 2.0. And a, a new brand feature is polls. So I have prepared two polls for you tonight or this afternoon. And let me see if, if you can see it. I start the poll now. I like to know if uh, you guys, if this time for you is good for attending. So let's try this poll here. I hope you can see. The question is if this time is good for you to attend. Uh, just choose a different time if it's really hard for you to attend at this time for the next webinars, for example, if it's important that it's earlier or later for you, or if that time, is, even if it's not, if it's not ideal, if this time is fine for you. Okay, I will stop this the call in twenty seconds. So this is a brand new feature for TMS Web Academy. It's very nice. Peterson, if you are from, if, if you are in California. All right. Let me share with you. Uh, here. Great. So uh, I will close this. Can you see? Sorry, guys, this is at the test. It's the first time this poll feature has been used. So did you see the results? Was it okay? For the poll, were you able to were you able to see the results of the, the poll? Okay, great. So today we are talking about tests, how tests are implemented, uh, unit testing, integration testing with uh, TMS Business. But as we talk about TMS Business, uh, we'll talk about concepts of unit tests, integration tests, and the tools we use here. And hopefully, it will be useful for you as a general knowledge. And again, the second, let me start the second poll and last poll of today, which is, let me know how much of automated tests you do with your software. I'm not talking about uh, manual testing or user interface. I mean, the automated test, the kind of that you can run every time to check if any change to your source code has affected your, your application, if it, it's introduced bugs and things like that. So uh, just to have an idea if this is a new topic for you or something that you are looking for, or if you are already covered by any kind of automation test, it doesn't need to be unit tests or things like that. All right. This is what we got. So maybe I, I will prepare some poll next time to ask you if you, you intend to implement the automated tests in your application. Um, <laughs> Well, let, let me open here again. Uh, yeah, we see the 60, 40% test something, all right. The majority don't test anything at all. All right, guys, testing is a bless. I will start with uh, Team Aurelius, which is where we have more tests. Let me show you something here. Uh, this is 
are the project already is unit test XC2. Don't be fooled by the name, it's just legacy name. This is internal tool, so don't be please give some uh, snack for the the names or the structures or things like that. This is only for our own use. And we are using the unit for the as a framework for the tests. Let me show you the structure here. And in case you are not familiar with the unit, it's just a, a framework for where you create your tests as methods, classes and methods. And it just lists your tests here as a tree in a tree view. And then you can select the tests that you want to run. And uh, in this case, all tests are passing, of course. And if some tests fail, it will indicate it here. So you can select what tests you want to run, run again, etc. cetera. Uh, first thing is that I see people uh, focusing too much on the testing framework. That's not uh, important, actually. The unit is just what, what I just said. It's just a way for you to have an easy way to get a graphical user interface or an output easily, but it's something that you could replace or you can implement your tests without the unit in 30 minutes. The problem is not the unit. Don't think that the testing framework will help in your tests. You have to build your tests. That's the main thing. For example, Adrian Galero from Flixel, uh, I know that he has, I have seen, he has thousands of tests for Flixel. And he doesn't use any testing framework. He built the tests himself because it was uh, it was better for him. Okay. Very low quality. Oh. What is low quality? The audio or the video? If 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 you get. Has anyone seen uh, it's just temporary issues then. Uh, back to the topic here. So if you see, okay, let's let's take a look at the tests it themselves. Yeah, maybe it's because the, the tests were running and thus the, the screen was changed a lot. So here we have, for example, Mapping Explorer tests, SQL Generator and things like that. And then one uh, different setup for Aurelius is that we have different tests for different databases and different uh, components because when you use Fairdeck, is different than when you use Unidec, for example, or DB Express. All those components have issues on edge cases, on blobs, or when you deal with timestamps. So with Aurelius, we, we took the effort to make sure everything works in all those edge cases. So you don't have surprises like, hey, uh, Aurelius works OK, but when I'm using Oracle with ODBC is not working for timestamps or for memo blobs or Unicode or things like that. So this is our basic test here when we have the native SQLite. This is the default testing for us because it's fast and it tests 90%, 95% of our LZ stuff, which is the logic to build all the SQL statements and uh, and the, the queries and all the internal objects. So it's a native SQLite used in memory, okay? But we have the, the big tests, which is, which covers the, all the database. Let me,
let me increase the size of the fonts. Twelve, maybe. So if I enable here, compiler directive that enables all the DB components and uh, also all the databases, then you see that we have all the tests uh, multiplied here. And this is the directive we use for, for continuous integration. So when it, before we release to make sure everything is working because, but not often because these tests take almost one hour to run. I have noticed that this my computer gets lower when I'm presenting the session. I believe it's the camera. I don't know what is. Usually it's not that low. So we see here that now we have SQLite SQL Server using remote DB or using generic DB, SQL Anywhere, MySQL. So now we have lots and lots and lots of different combinations, FireDAC, UniDAC with Firebird, UniDAC with Oracle, etc. And this is my development machine, So, but uh, we have a, a build machine that has more components and it takes lots of time. If you count the number of tests now, it's 31,000 tests. And let me open some uh, source code here so you have an idea of the kind of tests. For example, uh, the basic criteria is one collection of tests that we use to make sure that the query system works. So for example, uh, we really stretch the D unit here because we have some setup here, for example where we insert data, okay? So in this case here, we have lots of entities. So here we insert lots of, not lots, but we insert several records, key data that we want to test. So customers, so, and then for example, countries associated with customers. So we, we create the basic structures we need to test like lists, many, many value association, association uh, lists. And to even then, we have almost one hour of testing. So we try to optimize it. So all the tests, all the records are inserted, all tests run, and then the records are deleted. And these are, for example, all the tests that run over that uh, data. So for example, test sum. This is, this is one test that checks if the sum projection projection is working fine okay so we just run a uh, query over that data that does a select does a sum and of course we know since we have inserted the same data we know the value that the sum should return okay so that's it and then because of our setup, this, this specific query here runs, again, as I said, on MySQL, on Oracle, et cetera, because sometimes we have differences, so we make sure it works on all databases. And test this, this gives you peace of mind that you can believe, because uh, 
for example, if we have to change the behavior of projections or the sum projection, if you detect something that we, we realize that you have to change to fix a bug, and then we are worried, okay, we have to change this because there is a bug, but we will, but we will change the the behavior will change the implementation. What if this breaks on MySQL 5.7? What if this breaks there or here? But with testing, it's you just change it. Of course, you, you change with some criteria, but you change and run the tests and see if it breaks. And that's it. Uh, I have to admit that many of, not many, but some implementations that we do, uh, sometimes we rely on tests. And actually, for example, Aurelius is the most complex, in my opinion, piece of code of the whole TMS business. And there are some parts of the code that uh, I wrote, for example, parts of the code I originally wrote on 2012 or 13, and that's I don't remember much anymore exactly what it does. Of course, if I if I stay on it for so long, I will slowly remember. But uh, it's just uh, impossible with the complexity of Aurelius, for example, to make sure that you remember all the gotchas, all the things here and there that would break. So it's just, but with all the tests, you just change and go. And actually, as an anecdote, I remember when I was in the gym, I had a friend there, uh, a colleague that was there every day. And I said to him, wow, you, you are really, you have a very high discipline. You go, you come to the gym every day, every time I come here, you are here, etc." And he said, yes, I come to the gym gym every day because I'm very, very lazy guy. And he said, and I said, what does that mean? It doesn't make sense. No, he said, no, I'm, I'm a very lazy guy. And I know that if I miss the gym for one week on one month, I will never come back. So I come every day to make sure that I don't get lazy and give up. And about the tests is the same thing. The problem with the tests is that if, for example, if only 50% of Aurelius was covered, which is would be great, but you think, yeah, I will implement a new feature, later I will implement the test. But when you have, for example, 100% covered or 99%, then you, you have so benefits from it, like I said, that you get lazy, as an analogy to the gym story, that you force yourself to write the tests for everything new that you implement or that you change. Because you know that if you miss that, if we start one or two weeks adding code without adding the tests, everything will get messy and you never, uh, or you might never have the energy to catch up with it and implement the remaining tests. So that's more or less what's test driving, driven or driving, sorry about that, my English, development is about, is that every code you add, you add a test for it. You even write your test first. So for example, I want to implement the sum projection. I know that sum is supposed to retrieve the sum of some value. So I first write this test here, make sure that it's not working. And then I implement sum to make the test pass. So you add your test and it helps because it's a kind of specification also. So you have a requirement, add the test, instead of creating a new VCL application, write your test and do it, okay? Shoot any questions you might have in the chat. And one thing we, we do to evolve this is that we are now migrating migration to test insights. I'm not sure how many of you know about test insights, but let me try to show you here. First, let me remove the 
ODB components here. So we have our tests running fast. And okay, one ah, another thing. There is lots of questions about unit testing and integration testing. We don't make much difference in here. Unit testing is about uh, when you do unit testing, you are supposed to test all your classes, methods, and procedures. Like if you have a procedure int to string, you have to test it. And integration tests is more like we are doing here. It's like create some data and use several classes here, one to update the data, one to, to retrieve the manager, retrieve and check if the values. So this is more like an integration test, but we don't care about here uh, of, about that academic stuff. This is just tests for us. And the more it tests, the better. I personally think integration tests are more important than unit tests because it's testing the real thing more than unit testing. It depends on the situation. Okay. Are you following me, guys? Uh, so this is our new test projects using test insights. Let me enable here. Test Insight is a nice tool made by Stefan Glienke, the author of Spring for Delphi or Spring for D. And the idea is that instead of having that GUI viewer that I show you from the, about the unit, you have the your GUI viewer uh, embedded in your ID. Let me the compilation finish here. So this is my idea of, I docked it here. You can put whenever you want. And then if I click here to discover tests, it runs, technically it runs the tests as a client. And this, this plugin here is a server. It's an HTTP server that is listening for the application to run the test. So when I run the test, it sends information here. It's similar in user interface. I can run the test from here. So it's running the test. There you go. I can, for example, uh, have the test results on the fly. So you know that it's running the test here. Okay. You might ask, that's not much difference. Well, the reason we use the test inside, we are migrating to test inside, is to test, to run our tests on different platforms and even different development environments. Because first, many of our products uh, support iOS, Android, Linux, so mobile and and, uh, and other platforms. And as you might guess, that's user interface, the unit user interface doesn't work on anything other than Windows. So we have to run our tests. The test running is the same, but we have to have a different output. And we, are, we use the console uh, output and you have built a custom TCP listener to listen to the test, but it's, it's cumbersome. So testing site is nice because it was already done. So I can simply have this user interface here on my IDE and then have our tests run on Android, mobile, uh, iOS, and Linux. And don't worry about the GUI. And we intend, as some of you might know, we intend to support FPC, Free Pascal, and Lazarus in future. And also we do support WebCore. So with this tool, we can unify all our testing, so you don't worry about how to output the test. We just run the tests and test inside. We receive the results from anywhere. For example, we have 
this is under work. I didn't even test before this 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 webinar, but I hope it's working. Which is uh, running uh, tests on WebCore. So here we have tests. of pieces of TMS business that work on the web with TMS web core. My machine is as low as hell. Uh, Let me clear the results here and see if Yeah. Do you see that? It's it's the web application sending the test results for BCL. You see that there is no Aurelius because Aurelius is not yet supported on WebCore. So here are the tests running. And this is the benefit of it because, for example, I can select that I want to run only the JSON related tests. And then I refresh it here and the test is run again. So that was, was something that we didn't have before because we don't have a GI for the web core tests and we have to build some so we test inside this is really easy so it's it makes our tests universal okay i was going to comment something about it but i forgot any questions uh is there something specific that you want to see about tests that we are curious about Nothing. If I test all the B engine variations in build machine, yes, yes, that's what I just said. We have, we have, uh, let me see if I can start it here. Uh, not uh, I, I, it is you just be too much time to set up but uh, yes we have a build machine where we have all the database clients installed and configured and we have a different machine with all the database servers we are out we also have part of those servers in docker already but not all of them so we, we, we have actually two we use three machines, virtual machines, to run the test. One is the machine with the Delphi. And with all the Delphi environments we have, we have from Delphi 7 to, to Delphi 11, release it today. And all the DB clients configured. And we have one, two uh, virtual machines with the database servers. One of them with Docker and the other with Windows XP with some databases we didn't yet migrated to didn't yet migrate to the docker one so uh and then we run with all those databases is test inside a plugin on red test inside is a plugin yes made from a third party if you google for delphi test insights You see this uh, repository bitbucket.org as Glienke test insight. Okay, there is no source code, but it's on Bitbucket and you can download some documentation. You can download the installer from here, install it and you have it. It works with the unit, the unit X and the unit two. We use the unit. Ah, and uh, Actually, for all this to work, we have 
modified the, the units library. Had to do some modifications to support WebCore, for example, and uh, we are doing modifications to support Free Pascal and memory leak checking. We did some modifications and we published those modifications to a public repository here, uh, landgraph.dev. Huh? The unit. GitHub.com slash WLandGraph slash the unit. This we intend to this repository to be the central place for the unit because when working on, on refactoring all our tests recently, we realized that there are different D units versions, one with the, the one that's deployed with Delphi, the one from the unit repository. And there are a couple of other modifications for specific libraries for Delphi leak check, for example. So we unified all of those changes there, added modif modification to support free Pascal and web core, and we intend to evolve from here. So in case we use the unit, this, you can try to use this as our, your, as your main place to retrieve the source code. Uh, Rob Crandall of the Flashpoint series of simulations. Sorry, I didn't understand that. It's unclear to me how to take a legacy app that interacts with a user and databases and add automated testing. True, it's not trivial. Uh, you have some approaches, it's not easy at all. Some approaches are first refactor your, your application, try to isolate the code from your unit as much, from your form view as much as possible. So for example, a rough example, if you have a form that you have a, a button click event, and from there you open a uh, query and do some processing, try to move that button click to a separate class, non-visual class that you can test separately. So for example, up, up on the button click, instead of doing all the logic there, you do something like T, use a T uh, customer inserter class that you instantiate and just call, pass some parameters to it and just call insert customer. And then you write your code for that new class you have created. So you, you test, isolate the most of your code from your form, your view, your user interface, and then test that code, okay? And of course, there are tools and ways to test the user interface as well. You have tests complete, for example, that can test user interface. You have, you can have, uh, I believe there are other tools as well, but you have to refactor. That, that's, for example, one, one of the benefits of using an ORM. People ask, always ask, why should I use an ORM? Because it's easier to test code that when you use an ORM, because the data is already in classes, you, you are separating a little bit more the database access from your business logic. So it also helps if you use an ORM. But yes, a legacy, legacy application, it's harder to do. Mika mentioned that he's using test complete. Are you still using test complete, Mika? Runner X also. Yes. And there are some uh, also other tools like uh, I use it, uh, Microsoft uh, Windows API automation UI or something like that. I use it in the past for small things. It's also something that you might consider. It's a API from Microsoft where you 
gather user interface elements and you can simulate clicks and from code for example find button whatever click or mouse and things like that but i think the main idea is to separate your code in this era of cloud services and multi-tier applications this is easier because your application will be should be or will be naturally uh, already in, in, in multi-tier. You have your client application, your front end as a Windows application or a mobile or a web application. And then you you will have your backend with X data server, for example, or whatever backend you want to use that has all your business logic there. So then you can test your backend easily, easier because it doesn't have a user interface, test your endpoints, and then you test your user interface with a different tool. But your tests on your user interface will not be as critical as before, because even if you have some bugs in your user interface, it will only cause visual issues. All your business logic, your data integrity will be on the server side. By the way, for our XData users, we have internally a tool, develop a tool that, let me show you, instead of talking. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, I don't know where it is. Uh, test generator, I think. This is uh, under work, but it's almost finished. It's an XData test generator where you have your XData server, all right? You have lots of endpoints in it. Uh, automatic crude endpoints or service operations. So for example, I have some examples here that's test. Let me show the source test service here. This is a sample X data server when we have an entity and some uh, one test service here with echo string and test two service with another endpoint. So this tool here gathers all your API. It, it sees that you have an entity and you have two services and it generates I will copy and paste here so you can see it better. It generates a source code like this, which is just test cases for all the, your endpoints. So you have the T entity unit. If you create tests for you to delete, get, list, post, and put that entity, and also create tests for you to test the multiplication. So always. It's the skeleton, of course, it's it's uh, the boilerplate. You have to add your logic for So for example, it generated this test for the mu endpoint, all right? It already created all the basic for me, A, B parameters and mu. So all I have to do is come here and put 10 and two. And for example, check if the res value is 20, okay? So, this might become a tool for you, XData customer in future, to generate tests automatically for your XData server. Could you read now? Is it readable? No? Okay. So guys, uh, as I said, the idea of behind the scenes webinar is to be something light and fast. Uh, this session is not finished yet, but I want to rem remind you 
let me put the link here. By the way, about the feedback we have we had on the previous webinar, I see that you like the format, but most some of you didn't like the fact that there is no theme for the for the for the webinar. That's why we are starting to have a theme. So this today is the testing, and uh, the next one will be about installers. And okay, here is the link. So here is the link. I invite you to go there and see the replays and register for the upcoming one. The, the next webinar is already up for registration. And comment there. Watch, subscribe to that topic so you know about the upcoming webinars. We are we will be constantly updating there to put the replays and discuss about what you want to, to see and about the upcoming webinars. You can go to subscribe there. Let me open here. I'm, I'm not logging in, but if you go there, there will be a watch icon here. Watch this topic so you receive notifications via email about changes. The next one will be about deployment and installers and in two weeks because you voted for it. And, and please give ideas for our next uh, topics. I hope you have liked this. Is there any question you might have? I, we can talk about tests again. There's never enough time. Uh, I had lots of ideas to talk about you, to talk about tests with you, but uh, we already have 40 minutes and I don't want to make this long. Any feedback you have? Anything that you like to know about TMS business tests? What you do here? Any questions? How much extra time does it take to develop while creating all these tests as you go? Good question. The point is, say for example, that you have a requirement for an application or for a feature. Let's say you have an application and you are required to do a feature, okay? Is that, as I said, a new report or a new calculation that you must do you're going to implement this, right? How How is your way of implementing this? What do you do? You open your application and you start changing your code, but you have to test it, right? Even if you don't automate the test, if you as developer is creating a new feature, you are developing and you want to get the output of what you're developing while testing. I believe how many of you have done this, create a new VCL application, drop a T button in the form, double click the button and call your code that you are developing to test and do some outputs to memo or things like that. Do, have you done things like that to test new features you are implementing? So there you go. You are spending your time creating a test that you are not going to reuse later. So if you think about it, when you developing, develop creating a test, you are saving your time because, <laughs> because that button click, sometimes you don't even save the form, you implement, okay, it's working, close the application and forget about it. You lost your time doing that. And if you have done that in an organized way, instead of new VCL, instead double click the button, just open your test application, add a new method there and create your test there. So that's test-driven development. It's kind of what we do with the button click, but with the test 
So you are developing, create a test, okay, run, and you have your test automated. I think the hardest part is to have the discipline, to never have the discipline to write your test so you don't, as I said, like the gym story, you don't get uh, turned it off by the fact that you are behind, your tests are behind your code. So get the discipline to write your tests. And the scaffolding of the first one, I believe the hard part is to create your first test. As soon as you have created your first test, test application, and it gets easier to add new test methods, you will stop doing that button click approach and you just add methods to it. I think you are right about the discipline part. I've started and stopped in the past and that killed my efforts. Yeah. We have, for example, older products like TMS Diagram Studio, TMS Scripter, which is very used that I confess that I admit that they are far from being fully tested. And because it was, TMS Scripter was created in initially in 19, 1999. So it was 22 years ago. And it started without tests, with, with that kind of test. Let's test it here. Let's open an application. Let's test it manually and things like that. And to create all the tests for it will be a huge task. So we are doing that for new feature requests or new or bugs reported. For example, if you have a bug report, we write a test for it. So we make sure that it never repeats. We fix it and it's in our tests. But it's, it's I, I, I admit that it, it's hard to think about sitting down and writing tests for all of it, unfortunately. What else? I thought you'd be excited with this X data generator. Let me open this. <laughs> Let's see if there's something else here. The tests, web core tests, free Pascal tests. Uh, there is XData tests, Sparkle tests. There are tests for the whole framework. Uh, one, one hard part of testing is all this setup. So for example, as you saw, for to test Aurelius queries, I have to, we have to insert data to it. We reuse that data, but that needs some setup. The same for X data, we have to set up a server that it's easily, uh, that it has always the same state when you start with date and things like that. For example, in X data, we have this, uh the server implementation and again we test it with indy with uh, http .sys. so we have lots of test services here you see uh lots of methods that we test to test uh receiving and returning all kinds of data of data types string and and lists and things like that, returns. So that's that's the setup. But this was uh, this grew, grew organically. Of course, when we, for example, if there is a new feature, uh, we just, for example, the global filters for it. Feature. Uh, This was a feature added recently, the multi-tenant support with global, with global filters. So we had to create 
uh, the tests here, but then of course we also had to create, where is it? Uh, here. To properly test it, we had to create the interface. So it just simulates a multi-tenant environment here. Of course, much simpler, but you create a product that is a product entity table in the database that is supposed to be multi-tenant. So we configured it in the way that most users will use. And then we created lots of tests to check if it's working, for example, here. Uh, and next data there is a much yeah it's more in Aurelius because in next data we just check if it's communicating correctly but anyway organically organically grew growing okay we keep adding Working effectively with legacy code by Michael Fitters is a very useful book if you are like me and have to refactor a lot so that unit tests can be introduced to old code. Great. Thanks for the reference. I didn't know about that, that book. Great one. All right, guys. I hope it was valuable for you. If you have more questions, please go to Support Center topic. You can ask there. You, we can continue this conversation about tests there and register for the upcoming webinar in two weeks about installers and suggest new uh, topics, All right? I hope it was great for you. Thank you, guys.